Hello again Jules fans and welcome back to Jules in the Blood TV for another match preview. Um, myself and Boz um, going to look ahead to our visit to Peterborough this weekend. Um, we've got Thursday's edition of the Medway Messenger um, but obviously everyone's probably aware by now the breaking news early Thursday morning. Um, as you can see the back page is Peter Taylor saying time to step up. Taylor urges players to believe um, he's talking about us being a pretty young squad at the moment, obviously with the injuries and suspensions, meaning that lots of the youngsters are having to, to be involved, probably more than ideal. Um, but Peter Taylor went this morning. So what did you make of it? It was out of the blue, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> obviously, it wasn't a surprise when he stepped in. Everybody expected that. In terms of if it went wrong with Aiden, yeah. we knew it was going to, yeah, we knew what the logical I'm step was. I'm very surprised he's gone before a new man's been put in charge. Yeah, it's just come completely. Because out, it's not just it? him, is it? Um, fitness coach has gone as well. Yeah, so we're left with literally Steve Lovell and, and Mark, Mark Patterson. Patterson. Oh, and Glenn Johnson still there, the yeah. goalkeeper coach, unless I've missed something today. But um, I think um, it's it's probably a positive to be honest, because it shows that Scaddy's not willing to just keep him around this time, which makes sense to me. He's got experience. Yeah, I've heard rumours that apparently, despite what Mr. Taylor was saying in the press, and he, he didn't want the job. Apparently, he may have after getting back involved. Because yeah, he came out in the week, didn't he, and said, I like being on the training yeah. ground, it's what I've done. The thing is, he's not getting any younger, so... No, I think he made a comment, didn't he, and he said, all the time I'm willing to do this, he said, if, he said, if I didn't enjoy being on the training ground, then I'd happily go and be a granddad, because he's, what, 64, yeah. 65 now, which to me, he says, maybe he's got back into it and thinks, I'd like to another go. Again, yeah. But like you say, so if that is the case, then fingers crossed... Paul Scully saying, no, that is the rumour that came about this morning that, that Taylor said he was interested. Because it's no good uh, letting him go and him bring in another Eddie Pennock. Or a Hesse or an yeah. Ian Hendon or someone else it that comes to me back someone's again. Someone's coming so. and knows what they're doing, knows what they want. <coughs> um, but there was a new name this week. Obviously, it went from originally it was Sean Derry. Was Sean the Derry was the favourite a couple of weeks ago. Then Steve Evans came out of nowhere. Um, Martin Allen's still sort of second favourite. Hasn't really moved in terms of position in the market. His, his odds keep changing, but Keith Millen has suddenly appeared yeah. and went favourite. I think he's eleven to ten favourite at the moment. Um, and I think Steve Evans is not not too dissimilar to that, but but second favourite behind him. And then I think the rest, obviously Peter Taylor's now completely off the market. He's been moved. Um, I See think third favourites. Graham Westley was mentioned today. I'm not too yeah, I noticed um, Simon at Jules Three Six Five did an interesting piece yesterday or the day before. Statistically, all the managers, I think he did like the top ten in the running and what their statistics are. And weirdly, I think it was Hesse and Graham Westley that turned out as the top two. But they both, they just for me, they both just say underwhelming if it, if it was to happen. I think. And you'd think if it was. Um, Keith Millen was another one that you mentioned, yeah. Keith Millen's the favourite all um, of a sudden now. He was caretaker manager at Palace last season. Keith Millen, he'd probably need someone like a Taylor because he's only really, from what I can remember, been at Bristol City and Palace. Yeah, and he didn't get the Palace gig for long, did he? I think it was well, in no, a few games. I can't remember when he was there. Was it before Allardyce? Yeah, I think. Was it between. Pardew and Allardyce? Pardew and Allardyce, I think it might have been. It's the middle part of last season. I'm not saying he, I mean, he didn't do a lot wrong, but there's the difference between doing it over sort of five or six games. And again, and doing he's it over had experience 46. with, let's be honest, with better level of players than what we've got. Yeah, but obviously there's something in it because he's, he's 11 to 10 with Skybet for a reason, but for me it's a. I see one, some people have said, although he was at the game on Tuesday, on um, Sunday, he worked for Spurs apparently. So someone said Which he might have been looking, looking at, at Ogilvy. Connor Ogilvy and just wondering, wondering how he's still at Spurs. No, I didn't say that. Um, but yeah, so Taylor's gone. It was a bit, a bit out of the blue. Um, we've had a couple of bits in, but it wouldn't be Jill. This is Jill's in it. We've said, we've said this before. We've got yeah, on I mean, I said Jill only Jill's could get rid of the, the interim manager. <laughs> so we now got a caretaker interim. I don't know. We've just got know. a Steve Lovell, haven't we? Let's be honest. Um, we didn't, we, we've just been to darts. We've just played darts. And didn't we say we was in the pub and someone's tweeted and said that Jill's, <laughs> Jill's are the only football club that's had more managers than they've had league yeah. wins this season, which is, um, you have to laugh, but... It shows what, the state what does we're in at the moment. concern me slightly? This has happened on the Thursday, yeah? So if nobody comes in tomorrow, why do you not have left Taylor in charge for Saturday? Well, this is the thing that says then that Taylor's walked. It says walked, to me something's got Taylor's to walked rather than tomorrow. Taylor's been pushed. So unless it's lined he up. He must know something's in And the fact that Neil, what was his name? 
Witherington? Witherington has left as well, who was one of Aidy's men, would indicate that maybe someone's in the pipeline, imminent. And they've got their own staff. And they've got their own staff, but whoever it is, we're not sure. Well, I hope whoever it is, I don't get rid of Glenn Johnson because he's done a real good job with Holy. He's been really good with Thomas Holy, and obviously Tom Adler's gone out on loan and done really. And I've been, to be fair, I've been impressed with Steve Arnold. I like, yeah, I've, I've seen, I've seen him at South End, he was very good in the, the checker trade. Apparently, he was. He made a bit of a rick for the equaliser. Yeah, the free kick, I think. But he saved four penalties, so <laughs> you, it levels itself out, doesn't it, a little bit. But um, yeah, you'd hope he gets um, he gets the opportunity to carry on that work with Thomas Holy, who's been very good this season, aside from probably just one goal at Rochdale. Um, who was the last? There was them two were really short in the market. Who was the next two? Oh, Mad Dog and um, Jay Saunders. Saunders. See, Jay Saunders. I know the Mason are a rival and we're supposed to hate them and whatnot, but I wouldn't be totally against it. The only thing that says to me is Gillingham fans are going to get the ump because there's another one coming out in non-league. So if we're going to sit here and slag Aidy But he also does have links with the club. He's got, he's got people around him. And also Trigger's the there as well. So who knows and the Darren club. Hare's there. So you'd think... Yeah, there's a link, but it'd be I mean, interesting I, to I see the reaction. He's not my number one choice by any means, but I'd put him above some names that we've mentioned. I'd put him above Keith Millen. Yeah, because he, again, he's worked with players of who should really be lesser ability than what we've got. Yeah. If he's getting the best out of them, then what can he do with potentially yeah. a I mean, different that, type? Jason of sport? was just another name, but yeah, I wouldn't be against. Of course, yeah, and I think some of it's probably come about because he was at the, the, the Scumfort game, wasn't he? But apparently, he was just he there could have just been looking mates. at young just watching yeah, football. He could have been looking at someone from a scouting perspective, but. It's an interesting one, and then I think after that, them two are about eight and nine and one, and then it jumps right. There's about ten on twenty. Chris Powell for me, I just can't see why we've not been linked. I don't. He's desperate to get back into the game. From if you listen, he was you on believe um, all the sources. one of the Sky Sports shows last week. And yeah. he said he was desperate to get back in. So that says to me, he might take a punt on us as much as we take a punt on him, because a lot of people have said, "Well, would Chris Powell risk his reputation?" But in that thing that Simon done. I think he was quite low on the win percentage. He was down at sort of 38%, whereas yeah, I think like Hesse and Wesley were about 45. Right? Steve Evans was about 43. Yeah, Huddersfield, he struggled, I think. Charlton it obviously boosted that win ratio. Um, but we could talk about new managers and potential targets all day long. Um, we won in the week in the Ken Senior Trophy, or whatever it's called. Ken Senior Trophy. Set up a tie with Jay Saunders' Maidstone, ironically, which is Tuesday the 31st of October. So I think we're going to have a... I a drive down to that turn, should be a decent. Yeah, that'll probably be a proper cup tie that as well, and hopefully we'll put out a decent enough side to go there and compete. Hopefully by that time we've got one or two wins because otherwise we'll do the Jules thing. We'll go to that game. We'll get fired up for it. We'll win that and then we'll struggle again. Well, who do we play before we go there then? Peterborough Peter Saturday Wigan, and, and Northampton. Northampton. Peterborough away and then Northampton and Wigan at home. We've got two joys of two home games next week. Um, you used to look forward to home games, I remember then, don't you? used to look forward to just duels in general, but at the moment it's a struggle. Um, Mr Garmston and Mr Wagstaff made their comeback from injury again um, in the week. Both played 45 if, um, minutes. If Wagstaff was fit enough to play 45, why didn't he come on against Portsmouth? This was the question again, was he only on the bench to fill numbers? Which is weird because... But you're we not telling me we like... haven't got one or two other youngsters that could have stepped in just to make up the numbers? Like you have to ask Peter Taylor, but you can't because he's left, so... Maybe you can ask Steve Lovell, but then if he goes, you can mm-hmm. ask, Pat, ask Mark Patterson. Steve Lovell's like a cockroach, and he's just uh, always there. He's just always <laughs> about... Um, <laughs> so that might be a little bit harsh. But we've spoke in terms of Waggy and Garms for Saturday. We both said we don't want them starting. It'd be great if they could and they played well, but they're so I wouldn't injured. be against bringing Garms on in the second half. But they're so injury prone that you've just got to be... I you've mean, Garms, Garms you've got to be so sure when you bring him back. Yeah, because it's... There's a bit about it here, Steve Lovell said he's been really... When Garmson's fit, he's probably, along with Wags, I've said they're probably our two best players. When they have the potential to be our best two players, yeah, and they give us the potential to play 3-5-2 with proper wing-backs. They're probably the best two that are suited to it. It's but perfect for Garmson, that wing-back role. Well, we said in pre-season, again, you have to look at the context and who they're playing, but they were very good at that role, but they're no good if they're on a treatment table. Right? It's lots of, Lionel Messi's the best player in the world, but you can sign him, but if he's never there to play, it means absolutely nothing. But they're both in the frame... Mark Byrne returns from suspension. Yep. Gabriel Zaquani returns from international duty. Apparently, he did play. Apparently, he played 20 minutes. Luke even though, down, yeah, him. even though someone had originally tweeted and said that he didn't get on. I think one of the papers he wasn't down. Yeah. was coming on. So, 
Um, but obviously we've still got plenty missing. We've got Tommy he's still suspended. O'Neill. Luke O'Neill, Alex Lacey are both injured. Ben Nugent's now Nugent, added to yeah. the injury list. So in terms of what we're going to play, you're either going to play... I hope we don't start Conor Wilkinson. Well, but in, I was thinking defensively first, it's either going to be Amar and Zakwani if we play a back four, or you'd think Omar, Finn O'Mara would tuck in if we're going to play a back do three. Omar or Ogilvy tuck in. So... I'd rather play Alton Aaron Simpson. Alton Aaron Simpson got injured in the week. Bone yeah. bruising. But you know what bothers me with the Simpsons? We haven't heard a lot about it. And when the club doesn't mention a lot, it's normally about I think it. I see someone tweet said they'd spoke. I think it might be Lewis Browning because he's good friends with him. And he yeah. said he'd spoken to him and apparently it's not too serious. But bone bruising could Generally, be Generally, the way so. the club do it is if I don't mention that, I think it's a bad one. Then he's out for a year and you might as well retire him, him off. So. Um, Gabriel knows just what to expect on his return. Is a story inside the paper. Comes up against one of his former clubs. They were raving about him when we picked him up in the summer. Peter Brafan said he was absolutely brilliant down there. Um, it'd be good to have him back. The experience, we leadership, got a lot that of type experience of thing. Leaders, we're no. very, very low on experience at the moment. I mean, if yeah, you no matter what you say about Max Omar on Sunday, he was the experienced one there. And just, well, that's just what I said, and people were digging him out again, but I thought we'd done really well. He's had to play in a back four second half or for 65 and he's probably minutes. probably talking through. Well, we said, did we? When he, I, I spoke to Dad when he came on, and I think I mentioned it in the Match Day Live or the Monday Review. You see him as soon as young Jack, uh, Jack yeah, Tucker ran him, on, yeah. grabbed hold and said, Right, I'm going to do the talking, you listen. And to be fair, Jack done jumped done really okay, well. Yeah. He's, he's really small for a, for a centre half. He's, he's got to do a lot of gym work and a lot of bulking up, but fair play to him. I saw Stocky him. Stocky seems to think size wise, he's decent enough, he just needs to bulk up. Yeah, he's just got to go that yeah. way. He's, he's decent enough that way, but he's just got to fill out a bit, and that'll come with age as well as. Um, Gym work and stuff like that. Big, so. um, big plus for him now as well. Made his debut so early in the season. Well, I called it on the match day live, and we—I was talking to Dad about it and said, "I can't see him coming on." I thought they'd go Billy Bingham to drop we in, and we'd bring on a centre back, half yeah. or a centre midfielder. I'm sorry, but fair play to Peter Taylor. He took a risk, and ultimately it didn't pay off because we didn't defend properly from the centre in his first second half. But um, anyway, back to Gabriel's Aquani. Just a couple of quotes. It is a place I call home, but on Saturday for 90 minutes, it definitely won't be. Obviously, he's, he's, he's remembering his time when he was at Peterborough. He had um, some, some good times there. And another little bit, I try and give Finn as much advice as I can. He's a good boy and he learns quickly. I think he's been really good, Finn O'Mara, from pre-season right through to what we've seen of him. Yeah, we said in pre-season, didn't we? Although he, he was, he's not fancy, he's very... Um, just does his job, really. Knows his role. And that's yeah. all you are, sort of, young. Defence. Well, he's yeah. he's proper defender, yeah, so... <clears throat> A um, couple of times against Portsmouth, he probably went long a bit early or tried to just offload it too quick. But you've got to remember he's 18, 19 years old. He's still a kid and he's, he's still only, learning only a couple of weeks ago for folks, though. Well, exactly. He got called back, didn't he? And then suddenly yeah. made his debut at Ewood Park. He's, I think he was preparing for a FA Cup qualifying game or, so, yeah, or FA Trophy. Yeah, he was a little bit couldn't play on that. Yeah. And then suddenly he's playing at Ewood Park in front of 10,000. So, uh, yeah, he's probably disappointed he's missed out on the, the FA Cup game. But at the same time... Um, Team for Tuesday was Steve Arnold, Aaron Simpson, Henry Arnold came on, uh, Bradley Garmston, some of these names even I don't recognise, Conway I'm not sure about, don't know a lot about him, Jack Tucker, Ryan Huckle, Ben Chapman, Darren Oldacre, Jesse Starkey, Scott Wagstaff, White I'm not sure, Cundall and Nash we know and there was one lad that didn't get on but um, Jesse Starkey. He's only played once, hasn't he? There was that Scunthorpe game. I think he came on against Scunthorpe, but uh, yeah, he came on. The Tuesday night. He came on at half time, yeah. didn't he? Was it Claire or someone got injured? And he came on second half, played left hand side, done all right. Didn't pull up yeah, in the yeah, trees. Yeah, it wasn't fantastic, but did okay. But um, obviously, again, context in who we're playing and stuff like that. It's a non league side. But you can only do what you're doing against who you're playing against. He yeah. scored a good goal, he set up a goal, and all the reports I heard was that he was quite impressive. We've said, I think I said to you, he's. In terms of recent signings, he's probably one I've known the least about. You said you only knew him from sort of football management and stuff yeah. like that. I mean, he played, what, 60 minutes for Swindon last year. It's all like when we signed these people and they go, oh, he's ex-Chelsea and he's ex-Brighton, but... It doesn't mean nothing. Could he was be nowhere near the first team squad. Yeah, exactly, yeah. There, yeah. I mean, you look at, like, it's like saying Lee Martin's ex-Man United, but I think he played, what, 20 minutes in a League Cup game about 10 years ago. It's, it doesn't mean a lot. No disrespect to Lee Martin. Um... But yeah, he's done all right. He's probably played himself into contention. He might get minutes at the weekend. We're not saying that any of those that done all right against Phoenix Sports are going to suddenly go and win us a game against Peterborough. Um, Old Acres to that again, from what I've been reading. In league. Uh, some said he was a bit, sh a bit sloppy first half. <coughs> second half, really good again. So. And again, with the set pieces. I keep saying it. You need to have Did he hit the, the post as well? Or was it Greg Cundall at the post yeah, and he blazed it over? 
I think there was a bit of yeah. someone wasn't sure which way round it was, but he was involved. Well, I say it to you a lot. I think he's been on the bench practically every week because we're a big side and a lot of our goals are going to come from set pieces. Yeah, especially when you think if we got like Connor Wilkinson or we can get Tom Eaves back, because Connor Wilkinson unfortunately was really poor last week. I'm not going to go into that, but yeah, Tom Eaves is going to. You'd think Tom Eaves would score probably half of his goals would be with his. Well, yeah, so if you can get good deliveries, then yeah. Or even if he's winning stuff in the box that um, knocked down for others. Um, Liam Nash apparently was quite disappointing during the week. Well, we weren't Is there. Is that so. just because of lack of minutes, or do you think maybe? But will it do him a good thing? Yeah, I think he probably will because, because maybe he's, he's realised actually I'm not going to score in every game. I mean, I'm or to fight for and the also us fans suddenly won't go. Oh, we need to play Nash every week because we're not scoring. Let's put a kid in who's playing eight tiers below this last week. Similarly to remember I went to Dover pre season yeah, yeah, and uh, I think Mark Patterson said about and Pope. It's, there's too much pressure on him if he has if he scores a good goal. And I think he scored against the Belgian lot. Did really well, didn't he? Because we had Dave with us. Yeah, yeah, he did well. That's um, and he was very good that game. But you've just got to, you've got to remember that he is still a kid. He's he's in that bracket with Cundall, Simpson, all that for me. He's just taken a well, different. I really route. don't understand why he didn't come on against Portsmouth. Well, yeah, the logical thing is if you're chasing well, the game, you chuck down, strikers you chuck on. Striker on, yeah. And he's played List and Clare up front against Gunfort, didn't he, Peter Taylor as well? But at the time, he's probably thought my first game in charge. Defending well, him as I said to Stockton on Saturday, I'm, I'm not Connor Wilson's biggest fan. He was poor again on Saturday. It was awful, really bad Sunday. But if Nash isn't going to get on, or at least start with him, when we've only got Wilkinson as our striker, when's he going to get minutes? Yeah, because well, yeah, you're thinking this competition, Kent Trophy or Checker a Trade at best, and we've got what one more game in that in the group. Yeah, if got. you're thinking our striker Drews, who's suspended... So you think he's probably got his choice now when he's yeah. back? Parker's now become a winger slash wing-back slash... Impact sub, I'd say. So then you probably put Wilkinson still second. Exactly, so I'd say and Wilkinson and then Parker. Nash and Cundall. I'd probably say Parker's probably still in front of Cundall and Nash. If I don't we... know if he is as a striker, because like, you've been playing out wide so often. But if you're saying that we've got four strikers... Yeah, well, I think if them two weren't available, even Wilkinson, and you only had Parker, Nash and Cundall, I think he'd still start Parker over the other two. I, I just don't see where Nash is going to get minutes at the moment. Mm. I mean, it doesn't hurt when we're chasing the game against Pompey and giving 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, we the, the same, logical we, we thing is to put a striker on if you're chasing the game. But and we said, was it last week when he Taylor made a comment after Blackburn and it got taken out of context a little bit? But you can see fans' point because we've only got two. If you include Josh Parker, we've got two strikers that have scored. Yeah, Connor Wilkinson hasn't Greg Cundall. We're not scoring goals for fun, so for me, you we've scored six and twelve. That that says it all, doesn't it? In the league, that's point five a game. We're not going to. You're going to get relegated. Too much many goals we've had managers. Yeah, that was a tweet tonight that we've had um, more managers than league wins this season, only at Gillingham. Um, Saturday. I was a little bit about Mark Byrne, sorry, first. He does the shouting men this week. Speaks about um, the suspension and the injury probably helped him because it, he was suspended anyway for Portsmouth, but he rest, thinks he'd it? have probably tried to play if he'd not been suspended and he could have done some more damage, which he did last season. He said he put a similar situation talks about Shrewsbury doing really well in league what, another one I didn't see it at all no. Mark Burns says the same but he's saying if they can do it then why can't anyone else go and do it but it's confidence and it? it's a massive thing ours is on the floor let's be honest we're, at the moment we're one of them sides I think if we were to win a game I still think we need to win a second to get any sort of confidence or momentum because this is what we said about you can see us it? winning one and losing two or three that's it you know? could, that's the trouble it's with Penny. you could never see us going five, six, seven, eight games unbeaten it looked like I think what was, we said this the other week, I think we discussed it, I think the best run was like three wins out of four, but in between them three, we got smashed at Rochdale last season. So it was always a case of one or two steps forward or two or three steps back all the time. Um, sorry, I'm just interested why there's a picture of Peppa Pig against Mark Burns interview. Right, Mark Burns, age 28, position midfield, what do you have for breakfast? Porridge, worst answer, Liam Nash. Last meal you cooked steak. Last regret getting booked against Blackburn. Most prized possession my daughter. Worst injury, knee injury. Last time you splashed the cash, I've already started buying Christmas presents. My, ah, my two year old is into Paw Patrol and Peppa Pig, hence the picture. I was getting a little bit concerned then. Um, Saturday. They're doing well, aren't they? They just dropped off. They've just dropped off the last two weeks. And we said, beginning of the season, when we started doing our review of the uh, results roundup, the biggest thing for Peterborough has always been consistency. For the last couple of seasons, they've always been capable of going five or six wins, but then they go eight or nine without winning. They started really well, um, but they just dropped to fifth. I mean, by no means is it a bad start. They've played 11, won six, drawn two, lost three. But if you look, they conceded more goals than us, 
Have they? They've conceded 17 and we've conceded 16, but obviously the big difference is they've scored 22, we've scored 6. Jack Marriott's got they've 9. They've scored 22. We've scored 6, that. Jack Marriott's got 9. Who Jack Marriott, who did play one game for us a few time, years ago under Peter Taylor. Brentford away, if I remember right. Better memory than me with that one. <laughs> um, in terms of a team, Holy's got to start. Holy's a cert. I think Omar's a cert. I think you go, what, we gonna, what did we play last week? Did we play four at the back? Lined up as a four, yeah. Was it? Yeah, it was Nugent and Omar, Omar wasn't Nugent, it? Nugent, Omar, I've got it. So you'd think Actually, this week it'd be Nugent Omara, week. Omar, Zakwani, Ogilvy. I'd play Simpson. It's pace as well, and out there. And you a lack of Simpson's going to be fit, do you? That's the thing. But don't risk Bradley Carlson. Carlson's really should, do. should be on the bench. Yeah, I'd best a uh, bench at best for me. If you can get 20 minutes, then it's a bonus. Um, Mark Byrne comes back in, does he? Hesse and Bingham might play. <clears throat> Stocky was really impressive, Hesse, on Sunday. I think he's been all right, but he's another one who benefits from a run of games. So you might leave that as it is. You might leave Mark Byrne on the bench then, and then you play. But then does Byrne come in as a right back, like he did against, was it Blackburn? I think that'd be harsh on Finn O'Mara. So do I, but does, does he go with does the experience? Go with the experience? Yeah. It is very harsh when O'Mara drops out. In terms of up front, I think it'd be Wilkinson again, unfortunately. <clears throat> Claire in behind, Martin and Fantastic. Parker. Marvellous. <laughs> um, I've not seen any of their team news, to be honest. Like, we've already touched on ours. We've, we've got a couple back, but still about five or six that are, that are struggling or suspended. This is his last, Tommy's last one, isn't it? He's back for Wigan in yeah. the week. Um, prediction? I think we'll do well to get a draw. I seem to say it a lot, especially with away games, but <clears throat> I can't see us winning. We're either going to lose. We're not going to win. I'll, I'll go. For, I'll go for a narrow defeat. Uh, two one. Do you think we we'll score up then? Oh, I'm trying to stay positive. How many away goals have we scored this season? Zero. No, we scored one. Did we score one? At Wimbledon. Oh yeah. Well, that, well done, Sean Clare. That is the only one, isn't it? Yeah. Fair play to anybody travelling up there. I've said fair play when anyone going to any away games at this because this season because it's costing you money and it's been horrible. So um, well done to you lot. Um, we can hope that we get some sort of bounce and reaction from the fact that it's another new manager. Our third of the season. We're not even at the end of October. Marvellous. Um, but I think Peterborough have too much for us. I'm going to go two 0 Peterborough. Unfortunately, and I'd love to sit here and go, yeah, we can pinch something. I hope, and I was like, we've got two home games after, haven't we? I was, but what would you... Northampton could be a six-pointer already, yeah, it couldn't could it? Be. I'll see that online yesterday. Absolutely massive, that could be. They are one place and one point above us. They had a cracking result all the weekend, didn't they? Yeah. We Mate, started, that's Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank <laughs> come in and had a really good start, but they've absolutely smashed into the buffers now, haven't they? Did you see as well the uh, Northampton keeper got in one of the papers, team of the day? Yeah, and they can see six at home. Yeah, that's brilliant. So, and some of their fans are saying without him, he could have been ten. Oh, uh, his defence in front of him must have been absolutely <laughs> shocking then. Um, they are at home to Wimbledon Saturday. That's got me on your written all over it. Well, I'm going to have a pound on four all now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's a massive one there. And who's bottom Plymouth? They are at home to Shrewsbury. I can't Shrewsbury win all day for me in that one. And then Tuesday... Um, teams that are down there Northampton go to Rochdale so that's another two teams at the bottom of the table and we're at home to Wigan who are second Wigan would you take two draws from the two games? no I'd take four points or I'd even take three points to be honest if we lost that's what I said Wigan. would you take two draws Saturday, Tuesday? no you don't think that's good enough? <clears throat> but in our, in our, I think we'll in our current lose. position that's probably two decent results a point at Peterborough no, and Peterborough I'd rather Wigan. have three points I'd rather, You'd rather get smashed and then win I'd one I'd rather smash like, uh, sorry I'd rather beat Northampton no, sorry, I'm on about the two, the first oh, two. Oh, the two coming, then two points. If we could take a point at Peterborough and a point at Wigan and then beat Peterborough, you'd say it's been a good week. Wigan might win the league, so if we get anything beat Northampton, sorry. beyond that. Yeah, I said Blackburn and um, Wigan know this league from a couple of seasons ago. Um, anyway, we're going to start wrapping it up because we've rambled on for quite a, a while. One. Lots to talk about. Keeps you occupied, does Jules, doesn't it? It's not always good, but at least there's stuff to talk about. 2-1 um, to Peterborough, 2-0 to Peterborough. 
sorry we can't come up with any wins. Um, hopefully, we'll see you Monday morning and we'll be talking about a surprise win. Um, and obviously, we'll be there Tuesday at the Priestfield for Match Day Live against Wigan Athletic. And until next time, up the jewels.